Welcome back, everybody, to No Man's Sky. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we got lots to do as usual. Uh, so I've spent quite a bit of time off camera uh, just gathering resources. So we have a whole bunch <coughs> excuse me, of resources in here, as you can see. And um, so we're going to continue uh, doing some upgrades and installing some new parts. And I want to focus, too, um, on the Exocraft in this episode, among other things. Uh, in my inventory, uh, we have a lot of things to crack open and some new stuff to look at here. Uh, so I was I went over to the frost planet, uh, the neighboring fr frost planet, and mined up a bunch of dioxide in particular uh, because I like to use that for it. It works for both life support and for um, hazard protection, I think, and uh, <coughs> it uses a lot less than oxygen. Um, so went, we went and got that. So I got what the 500 in my inventory plus I got another thousand and seventy two there um, As you can see we've got um, Two stacks full stacks of cobalt plus almost an in, a full stack of ionized cobalt Lacks of carbon. Uh, we're still kind of low ish on copper, but we got a decent amount of chromatic metal uh, From there. Let's see anything in here to look at not Probably not really. I did find a planetary chart from talking to an alien at a, a minor settlement. So that's pretty much where we're at with all that stuff. Okay, so let's start with food first. So I found these uh, frozen tubers and those turn into steamed vegetables. <clears throat> so let's start making these. And what does that give us? Let's see. Oh, wow. 20% more life support power? For how long? Oh, no. It restores 20% life support power. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. That's pretty good, actually. Now, something else I discovered about the nutrient processor, which I did not know. And again, if you guys have mentioned this in the comments, I haven't seen them yet. I'm about one one to three episodes ahead of you guys, just depending upon, you know, my time to record and stuff like that. But um, there's like a whole another storage area in inside of here, 50 slots worth, in fact, that you can store ingredients. It'll also let you put carbon and I think oxygen in here, too, um, which is great because uh, that, you know, then frees up some storage space in our normal storage vents. So, yeah, discovered that and very cool. Okay, um, I think s it seems to me like steamed vegetables would be, uh, let's go back into here for a second. I don't know, that might be something we, we want to take to the space station in two, I, even though it's just a, you know, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a tier one or intermediate, maybe is a better way to put it, ingredient. You can always try. If he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. It's not a big deal. Um, so on the Starship, we have our soup that we're going to take up there. we got steamed veggies. I've got a full stack of navigation data. I also went out and got some more salvage modules, too, because there's a few more things I want to get at the anomaly when we get up there. Okay, so now let's look at uh, some things here. So I, I got this damage resonator. It's only worth 126, but it's something we crack open. Um, so let's open it up and see what we get. Oh, okay. So we got 74 magnetized ferrite. That doesn't suck. We'll put that in there. I got these um, gluey tendril and jellied larva items. From um, sometimes what happens is when you dig up a salvage data, there's also like a alien organism thingy growing near it and you can harvest that so let's see what this gives us cytophosphate okay and condensed carbon all right so that just gives us basic uh, more basic resources so nothing super fancy but kind of cool I guess all right now we got a bunch of the glowing minerals let's pop these open we already know these are going to give us the higher end um, or the more specialized minerals and ores and that sort of thing. You get these both from the underground thingies and also from floating crystals. 
Okay, we've already tested all of these, but this stuff here, what is this? Limium. Okay, so let's... Let's test the, this in the refiner. So one Limium is worth 25,000 units, and it processes into 125 gold. I'm pretty sure 125 gold is worth a lot more than just 25,000. Um, so if we take this gold and we split it in half and just look at 132, yeah, see, that's 46,000. So we just about double our money by uh, processing or refining, I should say, limium. And we've already tested all the other stuff, and so we kind of know the deal with that, with those things. So let's put the limium here. Um, definitely worth processing if you're not going to save it for crafting. But again, as usual, I want to save all this stuff for crafting because we aren't going to need it for that. All right, now, um, I also mixed it up some more with some sentinels. Uh, nothing major, just, you know, did some basic battles with them. And in the process of doing that, I got um, more uh, pugnium. So we're up to 7800 or no, seven, yeah, 787 of those and then uh, we got a whole bunch of salvage glass to break open so let's start popping these open all right look at that <clears throat> that gave us a lot of stuff so it, it's, it's a bit of a crapshoot with this stuff but everything it gave us is is decent um, including a couple of antimatter. So let's put the dirty bronze away. We got two quantum computers in, um, what is that called? Hydraulic wiring? Yeah, hydraulic wiring. We got a sentinel boundary map. Oh, th is this the one that takes us to the tower where we can shut them down? Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with that. We're not gonna do it right now, but uh, we'll hang on to that and, and do that. Okay, we got and some more Viking effigies, so let's put that away. Um, five weapons shards and one exosuit fragment, and then two more antimatters. All right, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna hang on to the antimatter for crafting purposes because I I've already made five antimatter fuels, uh, warp warp cells for fuel, and let's let's see what we got here. Man, that is 2,400 nanites. But, I mean, this could be some really good stuff, though. So, I think I'd rather get the modules than the nanites. Um, so... Alright, so let's see... This is an exosuit. So, it's just another one of these jobs. Core health, shield strength, solar panel, life support... Wow! <laughs> That's really good. I now I think these sentinel thingies. I mean, do they? I don't. I think they go just by themselves because I I don't think they relate directly to anything else. Because look at this, they're all white, outlined in white, but the life support stuff is blue, and it's next to life support, but it's not. It's just. It's just coinciding with these guys. So that leads me to believe that these are their own thing and they don't directly associate with anything else. The other reason why I think that is because if you look at them, they affect, this particular one affects both shield and life support together. So they're kind of like a, a combination of things. This affects shield strength and sprinting. This is fuel efficiency for the jump pack and shield strength. So these are really powerful mods. We've got to get some more slots open up here all right that was good now let's see we got some more weapon shard thingies so let's just crack all of these open and uh, okay so what i'm thinking here well no because these technology overloaded what does that mean too many upgrade. Oh, you can only have us. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. You can only have a certain number of these. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do then. 
Um, we're going to... If, if I store this, can I still see what it is? And what it does, more importantly? N not really. I mean, I can see kind of what it does, but it doesn't give us details. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to do then. We're going to put all of them up here so we can look at them, and then we'll choose the, the three most powerful ones. And maybe some of them will be identical, I don't know. Okay, so, um, trying to decide how I want to do this. So these all affect, these all affect the bolt caster. So that's 15 reload time, 19 fire rate, 2 damage. Oh, okay, so this one is already automatically better than this one. Because this only has 10 reload time and 1 damage. So I think what we'll do is we will store this. Now, how many nanites can we... Well, yeah, we only get 16 nanites. That's not even really worth it. If we end up not using it, then we should probably just break it down because we get 75 chromatic metal and 75 um, pugnium from it. Okay. All right, so... That's minus 4 reload time and 6 fire rate. I didn't actually compare this to that, so here, let me put this back for a second. Okay, so minus four reload plus six fire. Uh, well, this is definitely better than this reload time. The question is, do I want to exchange fire rate for one more damage? Hmm. That's one damage. Okay, here's here's how I think I'm gonna do this. We this one has three benefits. The rest of them have two, and these guys only have two. So that means we should probably automatically be using this in place of one of these two. So let's see, one damage in 15 reload time, four reload time, and six fire rate. I think I'd prefer reload time. So we're gonna move this into there and actually, I want this next to the to the other one that has three benefits. So they're bon giving each other the bonus. Okay. Now this is Okay, let's see. Fire rate, reload time, damage, fire rate, reload time, damage. Damage. 14% fire rate is pretty darn good which is this one here. So, do we want faster fire rate in one damage or faster reload time in one damage? Yeah, these two are definitely inferior. And I would say this one is too. So probably these four would definitely are inferior to everything else we have here. Okay, so once again, we get 20% fire rate. So, man, they, there's a huge variation in, in these. Some of them are, are really powerful, and some of them are not that great. So, it's just a, a real crapshoot. So, that's given us 15% reload time. That's given us more fire rate. This is really good, man. Look at that. 15% reload time and 19% fire rate and 2 damage. That's, the, like, definitely the most powerful one. <coughs> out of all of these, I would say. 
so I guess here again, my question, the question I need to answer is, do I want more reload time or do I want more fire rate? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the fire rate, the 14% fire rate here. I'm gonna keep the reload time. So we're gonna store this in case I change my mind and want to try that instead. And then the rest of these, we're not going to get very many uh, nanites. So I think we're just going to dismantle all of these. Good. And that reactivates the this now. Very cool. Okay, and that gave us 300 pugnium and 300 chromatic metal. I'll take it. Okay, so let's move that there. We'll we'll save this for now. And uh, because here again I might use it later. And 300 chromatic metal, that's not too bad actually if you think about it. It gives us now it gives us a full stack of chromatic metal plus a little bit more. I like it. Guess we'll just put that there for now. Okay, cool. So that takes care of that. All right, now next thing is, um, let's get our Exocraft upgrades going. So we're gonna go to the Exocraft here. Now I've put the. Does this have three? Oh, this does have three supercharged slots. That's cool. All right, so. I'm mostly interested in mining and speed with this. Not necessarily combat, though. I could definitely change my mind on that for sure. Um, so what I want to do is let's install the mining laser here in this slot. Um, actually, no. We'll put the booster there. I want to put the mining laser here so I have a few slots to surround it with other things. Um, oh, okay. That was weird. Okay, so we need magnetized, chromatic, and life support gel. Two life support gels. Alrighty, so let's go into here. Uh, I got some dye high jelly and a bunch of plating. Life support gels. Oh, I need carbon for those. Okay. Nope. Okay, let's just grab a stack of carbon. And we know we're going to need magnetized. And we know we're going to need chromatic. So we need to make two life support gels. And then we should be able to go here. And that, that, that. Nice. Okay, so now we have a supercharged mining laser on our roamer. Okay, so that's... This is for the mining laser. So let's install this. Um, and we need to grab some pugnium out of out of here. Um why is that? Oh, because it's in a supercharged lot. Okay, because if I put it here, then they're both the same color. Right, okay. I was going to say, how come it's not matching the color? But it is, it's just pulsating. Very good. Okay, so now... Um, I wish there was a way we could tell if it would be better to put this in the supercharged lot or this. I almost wonder if... I mean, this is pretty good. 62% mining laser power... 
which I guess I'm going to translate that to mean faster mining. And I guess the 100% means more yield. All it says is advanced exocraft mining laser, but it doesn't say what exactly it's giving us a 100% of. So it's kind of weird. Okay, now this is all suspension handling stuff. And I would, and this is a fuel system. Oh, you know what? We don't have any storm crystals, so we're not going to be able to do anything with that for now. We can do the radar. Okay, so we're going to need a microprocessor, three microprocessors, and some gold. And I've got ion batteries already. All right, so let's make three microprocessors. And for that, we're going to need three carbon nanotubes. Well, I made four, but that's okay. Um, all right, let's go back to the Exocraft. And that's the fusion engine. Why don't we put this there. And then we will install... Oh, we needed gold for that. Right, okay. We need more chromatic metal. would tell us how much scan we're actually getting. All right, and then let's install the B. Okay, so, you know, one thing that was odd, though, is when I was looking at this before I installed it, it said 125% scan, but now it just says 100. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Anyway, this will now allow us additional building types. And yeah, okay, that should be good. Now, um, if we go here, I'm assuming that these things... Overhauls Exocraft handling values through a combination of software tweaks, specifically tuned to increase the ability of the Exocraft to slide. Um, so I guess that would be good for drifting, but I'm not necessarily... I guess if you were maybe for racing, but we're not really racing, so I don't know that that's going to be really beneficial to us. Sharp turn would be useful... Oh, that's... Wait a minute, that's drifting. Hmm. Well, because I'm not using it for racing, I think turning sharply is the one that I would want. I'm just not sure what... It probably would go by the engine. So let's install this one. I, ha I should have wiring loom in tritium. I think I have one. Oops. What just happened? I don't know. Something weird just happened. <laughs> oh, I think I accidentally set down a... I've done that before. I accidentally set down one of these thingies. This is like a, a quick waypoint. Um, So, we want to look at it and then get rid of it. You have to use your... If you hit F and E accidentally really quick, it'll set those down. 
uh, that happened to me um, off camera and I couldn't figure out what it, I had done so I had to research to figure, <laughs> figure out what I did and undo it. Anyway, um, we were looking for a wiring loom, right? Uh, yeah, we have one wiring loom there and I think we should have, we're, I'm going to have to go do some more um, asteroid harvesting too at some point, but that's also going to be an off camera thing. Okay, let's go to the back to the Exocraft and we'll grab this. Alright, so that does not match up with the boost module. Does it match up with the engine? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. So that'll help us turn more sharply. And with this we can't do until we come across three storm crystals. So we'll have to hold off on that unless we can find some place to purchase those. And then I'm not interested in either one of those because that's for racing, I would think. And we're not interested in racing. Okay, so <clears throat> we've upgraded our roamer. And we now have um, the ability to do some mining with it and some scanning with it. Fantastic. Now, I think that... Let's look at the multi-tool again for a second. Uh, oh, this, right. We needed to finish this. So we need one quantum computer and three magnetic resonators. Uh, so we have a quantum here. And we're going to have to make the magnetic resonators. And that's why I needed, I think, ionized cobalt. Or maybe it was magnetized ferrite. I don't remember. We'll see. Okay, so there's that. And we need three of these. Oops. Yep, both of those things. Multi-tool. There we go. All right, now we have the advanced scanner. Self-contained circuitry upgrade for the analysis fire, adding real-time terrain analysis to the scanning array. You know what, though? I don't know. Is this, um... If we go... Oh, yeah, look at this. Okay. So we have we have more nodes. So now we can scan for hot spots, which we can put those special generators on. We can scan for mineral survey nodes. Something's beeping over here. And oh, gas survey. Okay. Interesting. Okay, let's go see what that's about. Concentrated gas cloud. It says potential C, so I guess that means it's C class gas cloud. I like that it also uses an auto an audible signal too to help you really pinpoint it. It's somewhere down this way. So right down in through here. here. There we go. Analysis complete. Where is it at, though? Hot spot discovered. So is it invisible? Oh, 
Oh, okay. I see. I see something uh, up on my compass at the top of the the screen. Do I do a one of these? Hmm. Is it just this general vicinity and not a specific spot? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Because if you look at the top of my screen, you can see that little orange gas icon thing. What happens if we move back away from it a little bit? Just says hotspot discovered. So I guess I'm interpreting that to mean that it's just this vicinity. We know it's, you know, right over here somewhere. Let's get rid oh, we haven't even scanned that guy. Didn't it say that we hadn't discovered it? Or is there something else? Hmm, I don't know. Let's just get rid of him. Okay, so... Oh, we have to go back to gas, gas mode. What I want to do is walk forward until it flips around, and then we'll know we're more or less in the center of it. Right there. Okay. So, yeah, I guess it's just this general vicinity, this area here, that the gas is in. So that means we should go up to the anomaly and, and spend some salvage data on the gas extractor thing and then come and plop it down. I don't know exactly what we need the gas for, but I'm sure we do need it for something. All right, cool. All right, let's see, where are we at? We got our analysis visor done. We cracked open all that stuff. We got our Exocraft upgraded with what we currently have. Um, so I think it's time for us to head on up to the anomaly. We have some things that we need to turn in and um, get a couple more things with salvage data. So let me put all this stuff away. I'll meet you guys up at the Space Anomaly. All right, guys, we are at the Anomaly. Uh, one thing, too, that I forgot to tell you is that I discovered all of the critters on... Um, I think it's... I think it was this one here. Yeah, so we've done all the critters here. Uh, so let's get some nanite bonuses from that. And then I also discovered that you don't have to upload these individually. I guess the only time you would do that is if you wanted to rename them, which I kind of don't care about. I don't know. If we ever come across something that I'm just really enamored with, I might name it and upload it. But generally speaking, um, that doesn't matter to me so much. Um, so, But what we can do is we can upload everything from here. Uh, so we currently have 4,813 nanites. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that got us up to 5627. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay. Oh, we got a milestone. Good timing because we can then turn it in. Discover all species on two planets. Nice. Okay. Go away, milestone. All right, let's turn in some data to him, get some more nanites. Creatures. And, ooh, wow, 829 nanites. Very nice. Okay, let's turn in milestone data to this guy, gal, whatever, it, him, her, maybe both. Oh, yeah, this is, 
This is the alien that also wants some storm crystals, so we need a total of four storm crystals now. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Ooh, another 450 nanites. Beautiful. All right, do we have access to our ship inventory? We do. All right, now, I want to present steamed vegetables. Well, you have created the most average steamed vegetables imag imaginable. Quite some of you. <laughs> it's a smart ass. <laughs> Did we get anything? Oh, yeah, we got some nanites for that. Okay. Now, let's try the mystery meat stew. Outstanding. Possibly the finest mystery meat stew I have experienced in this iteration. He's, he's been a smart ass, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, we impress! Oh, we did impress him. We impressed Cronus. All right, look at that. What do we get for it, though? All right, does he have? A, is there a place here we can go to discover recipes? I don't see an option here. Here, let's talk to him one more time. Okay. Uh, I guess not. All right. Well, I think we got some... I know we got some nanites for the steamed vegetables. If we got nanites for the stew, I didn't notice it. But we're over up to 62, 61, which is really good. All right, fantastic. Let's go... I think we're done in this room. So let's go into here now. And I want to get... I'm gonna go into here. I'm holding off on getting more of these at the moment because my understanding is when we get a freighter, we get, I think we can get those. We still have to build them, but we, we get them for free. We get the blueprints for them. So we don't have to expend salvage data. Okay, so this is the gas harvester thingamadoodle. Um, let's go ahead and learn that. It's now that we have a gas spot. And I also want to get the galactic terminal. And I want to get the save point. Because we talked about in the last episode that this is the save point you just keep at your base. The other one is actually a beacon that you can go out and set out in the wild. Antimatter reactor. You, uh... So... I don't know how we find reality paradoxes. So I guess that'll maybe come clear later. Where is that? Where's that power generator? I'm going the wrong way. Or maybe I wasn't. Here. I don't think I'll spend salvage data on this yet, but as soon as we can find a one of the power, you know, high field strength sites, then uh, I want to get that too, but we don't necessarily need that right now. We might want to start thinking about growing crops, but I just don't know if I want to do that at this base, because this is not, at present, I, I don't consider it our, our, our main base. All right, now one of you guys told me that if I do some mission for somebody I can't remember I'll have to go back and look in the comments that um, I'll get a Minotaur but I mean 10 salvage data is not a big deal to farm up I, of course I don't know how much this costs to make oh no I guess it tells us right there yeah that's not that's that's not a big deal all right, I want to get the Minotaur, maybe not quite just yet. Right, let's talk to Celine again for a minute. I want to look at something. Research exosuit upgrades. Yeah, that's the underwater thing. 
you guys were telling me to get these class C's because um, you know once you start stacking them up they they do make a pretty significant dim difference uh, and I can see that the problem that I have at the moment though is I don't have room it, we got to open up some more slots on our exosuit so I think we'll hold off on that for the moment all right let's go over to you for a minute wanted to look and see if there was anything else I wanted to get at the moment. Barrel ionizer. Okay, that, that helps with the bolt caster. Oh, the pull splitter was is supposed to be pretty good too. It's like supposed to be a little bit better version of the bolt caster but it doesn't but it it's continuous it's not like three round bursts and then you're done um, but it also can overheat more quickly too so we have we have all of these that we could unlock let me look at something here um, multi-tool yeah, we, we still have quite a bit of room on this multi-tool. So I'm thinking I might want to try that. I don't know, the bolt caster with all these upgrades though is gonna be pretty darn powerful. Yeah, let's let's hold off on that for now. Uh, I, I wanna give this a, a good a good go and just see um, you know how well it how well it is. Or how how good it is now. We have, we have, we got everything we can for the blaster. Yeah. Okay. So the shell grease was the only other option they give us. Okay. So I think we're good on multi-tool upgrades for, for the knots. Now let's look at you again for a minute. So we got all the upgrades for the radars. We don't need to worry about the thermal stuff on our current planet. That's all submarine stuff. This is all Minotaur stuff. So the only thing we haven't done is we haven't got the uh, the mounted cannon. I mean, it, we have room for it, so let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. And then we'll have to go to the space station to get upgrades for that. Okay, so have I done everything I intended to do here? now I think so yeah we're completely maxed out on our exosuit so until we open up more slots that's probably going to be the configuration that we're going to have for a while all right let's hop over to the space station next and a couple things we're going to do over there okay so we need to finish the fragment supercharger um, oh you know what I can finish that I have the magnetic resonators I thought I needed another wiring loop for that okay so we'll fix that when we get back to the base I think everything uh, no we need to fix this too so that we can also fix when we get back to the base Exocraft, there's nothing we can do with that right now, and everything here is fully installed. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, guys, for kind of our next big step that we're going to do in the playthrough here. We need to make some substantial cash so that we can upgrade to a nice fighter ship. And so, to that end, um... What I'm going to do here, let's go over here for a second. I'm going to buy a few more of these just so we have some on hand. Let's get like five more of these. And it doesn't look like we can buy any of those crystal thingamadoodles. Okay, what are you? Oh, you're the mission agent. 
I'm not really interested in doing missions, at least not right now. Maybe we we might do some of that stuff later. Yeah, I want to talk to this guy. Okay, so apparently, from what I understand, one of the better ways to make money, particularly in the early game here in, in Waypoint, is to find salvage ships and then scrap them and sell them. And then, of course, we also have the option of exchange specific charts. Yeah. Uh, we also have the option of uh, possibly finding a better ship, too, that we'll actually fix up and keep. But the more important thing I want to do is I want to um, do it for money, okay? So what we need to do is we need to do the uh, emergency... Yeah, because this finds bases. That finds outposts. That finds alien places. That finds settlements. This finds exosuit thingies. So I want to grab some more of these because it's definitely much less expensive, at least in terms of raw money, to just go find these and upgrade them from the things. So what I want to do is... I've got a full stack of charts, so why don't we... So that'll give us 12 charts. Let's start with six charts. Okay, so do... No, I'm, I'm, I think I'm doing that the other way around. That only gave us two. Yeah, let's put that into our exosuit just so we can more directly see what's going on here. Okay, so we have 36 of those. Um, what does Ask for Help do? I don't know what just happened there. I think we just took a side quest. Okay. Uh, exchange specific charts. So, I think we have, we get one map for a, every three of our, of our nav data, right? Navigation data. So we, we have 36 of those. This For whatever reason, this is not clear clear to me. <laughs> we have 36 of those right now. So if we go exchange specific charts, let's just buy one more of these. Okay, so does that mean... Yes, okay. So, it, so we basically it costs us three of these for each chart. Okay, gotcha. Now, what I want to do then is I want to also purchase a bunch of the um, the emergency charts because these are the ones that give us a chance of getting um, crashed ships. So that would be 30 right there for 10 charts. And then let's go ahead and get a couple more of these two for suit upgrades. Okay, yeah, so we got 10 of the emergencies and then we'll do suit upgrades for the rest. Just double checking. Now, my understanding too is that if we ask him for a random chart, which only costs 50 nanites, whatever that chart ends up being is, is the same chart he'll always give us. So let's take a gamble here and see what we got. Ah, shoot, we just got a dumb planetary chart. Uh, I mean, not a planetary, a um, artifact. Like the least most important one that I wanted. <laughs> okay, well, that's the way it goes. 
All right, well, then then from now on, anytime we ask him for a random chart, that he's always going to give us a an artifact chart. Okay, uh, so yeah, that sets us up pretty good. So, in the next episode, we are going to start... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go after these and uh, upgrade, but we're also gonna start running these emergency charts in hopes that we can find ships. And if it's a ship that we don't want, then we're gonna claim it and bring it back here and salvage it. And we should make some pretty decent money uh, with the goal in mind of upgrading to. I would like I'd like to get a fighter. I'd like to get a nice fighter um, before we start doing uh, you know a, a lot of massive exploring. Um, you know what else though? I wanted to also install this. Yeah, we should be able to, to do that when we get back to the base. All right, let's run back to the base really quick, finish these uh, final installs that we want to do, and then we need to wrap up this episode. Okay, let's grab these magnetic resonators out of there, go to our starship, and get that going. Very good. Okay, so now 20% more accuracy and 25% more range. That's actually significant um, because Positron Ejector is a pretty badass weapon. Now, oh, you know what? There is something else I wanted to do up at the Anomaly. I want to try out the... Oh, what? The purple beamy thingy. The Yeah, the Cyclotron Ballista. This thing is is pretty cool because and you guys were telling me about it in the comments too it's pretty cool because it does two things it just destroys shields but it also screws up it almost puts like an emp blast thing on the ship's engine and slows it way down so my thought is we use this to strip shields and then we use the cyclotron ballista uh, i'm sorry the positron ejector uh, to take them out uh, and and rockets too we could also use rockets um so yeah, I think I, I think I want to mess with that too, but I really don't want to get into major combat though until until we have a fighting ship. So we'll put that one on the side burner for now. But it is in the plans to get that done. We had something else we had to upgrade too. I think it was on the multi tool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was this guy. Uh, so we need hundred magnetized ferrite. There we go. Okay, that's done. Fantastic. Um, we want to go to our Exocraft and we want to install the cannon. So that requires Pugnium and Copper. And I don't have any turbocharged slots, and I don't have any mods for the cannon. Uh, so I guess we'll just put it here for now. It's not considered part of this class, is it? No, it shouldn't be, because it's a weapon, as, whereas this is mining stuff here. Oh, I was going to look at some stuff at the space station for, for modules. Oh, man, there's just so much to do. <laughs> so much to do, so little time. Uh, there was, wasn't there one other thing we were gonna do before I let you guys go? Oh yeah, economy scanner. That's what we were gonna do. Okay, so I need five microprocessors for that. Um, so we need chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes. So, the thing that I didn't know about the economy scanner until I just recently discovered it is that it'll actually find outposts for you on planets, um, which is very cool. Uh, in addition to its main purpose, which is to find out which systems um, are, you know, one star, two star, three star. We're going to do our ship hunting in a three star um, Viking system because those have the highest chance of A, fighters because it's Viking and B, S-Class, because it's three-star. So that's where we're going to actually do that at when, when we start doing that. 
Okay, so, uh, what, what did I need to do? I needed to do... Okay, so we gotta do five carbon nanotubes. Wait a minute. Exosuit. Yeah, we need carbon. Now we should be able to go to the starship and we'll just put it right here and now we have an economy scanner beautiful all right that's gonna definitely come in handy uh, in the future all right guys here's the plan I am gonna go out and do these upgrades on my own all I'm gonna do is scan for them fly to them Upgrade the suit. Scan to the next. Uh, scan the next one. Fly to it. Upgrade the suit. So the next time you guys see me in the next episode, we will have. Uh, we will have ten more slots opened up, and I think I'm going to put those almost entirely in technology here. So once that's done, then we can buy some more of those hazard protection modules, and you know, and up and upgrade ourselves even better. So I'm going to do that off camera. Um, then what we're going to do in the next episode, the plan is, is we're going to go ahead and start hunting for salvage ships using these 10 emergency planetary charts that we got. Um, and the goal is to A, make money so that we can B, either buy a nice fighter ship or maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find a nice fighter ship that's worth fixing up. Okay, so that is the plan. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.